Now, not everybody wants a speciality ink. There's an awful lot of the people out there who just want a normal coloured ink, an ink that can be applied to a fabric or a paper with a brush, pen or screen printing process. And of course there are those kind of inks out there to buy. The problem with them is they're actually fairly hideous, both in terms of their environmental impact and actually just using them. But there is another methodology, and that methodology is a green methodology. So what we've got here is an ink that uses only biodegradable products, safe products, products that you can buy on the shelf and eat if you want. Okay, there's nothing particularly harmful in here and it makes a very good ink for exactly those purposes. It's a coloured ink that can be applied with a brush or a pen or usually screen printing. Now, it's a stepwise process. So the first process that you have to do is create the ink base. Now, if you refer back to the ink basics video that I was talking about when I talked about the colour, the binder and the carrier, then what we're going to do is make the carrier base. The carrier base is actually a bit thicker than normal because we want this um, ink to hold together so that we can screen print it. Now there's lots of ways of making a carrier base and this one uses this stuff, which is sodium alginate. The reason it uses sodium alginate is it's particularly good at making quite a thick, natural kind of liquid that can be used for printing and is biodegradable. Sodium alginate is just extracted from seaweed. Now what we do is take one litre of just boiled water in order to get that sodium alginate to um, dissolve in there, we need some way of helping it dissolve. And you use coconut oil. Now you use about one millilitre of coconut oil, which is not very much, it's a cubic centimetre. Your average teaspoon is five millilitres. So you basically want one fifth of a teaspoon of coconut oil. And you stir it in there. The fact that the water is hot will help that coconut oil to dissolve in the water and spread through the water. When you've done that, you need 3.7 millilitres of your sodium alginate. Now, you don't need to be too exact if you're making a batch for yourself. These figures are just guidance for you. If you're going to make this stuff to sell it, you're going to need to weigh things out, only because you're going to need conformity from one ink to the next. So, weigh things out if you're planning on making it for sale. Do rough measurements if you plan on just using it for yourself. So 3.7 millilitres is just less than a teaspoon. Now the sodium alginate will expand once it gets into that water, but it likes to clump. So get the thing stirring and tap your alginate in there to try and avoid those clumps as much as possible. So in order to get that to mix quite nicely and evenly, I use this thing, which is a handheld blender. It homogenizes it quite nicely. Now, obviously, this is all organic ingredients, so if you leave it sitting around, it is going to go mouldy, it's going to go off. So what you need to do is add a preservative to it. Now, a very good preservative is actually just oil of cloves. You can get this at the local chemist. Normally, when you get it, it has a little dropper attachment fitted to it, and you put in one drop per litre. Now, we're making a litre, so we want one drop of this stuff. So just take it out and add a drop. And that's all you need to do for the preservative. That will preserve it. You need to store this in a sealed container so it doesn't get contaminated, but it'll last for absolutely ages. Again, that will depend on your environment. If you live in a hot climate, it's going to go off much more quickly. If you live in a cold climate, it's going to go off in a very long time indeed. So if you store it, store it in a cool, dry place. And then that will last for a very long time for any other inks that you want to make. But basically, there is your base made. So having made our carrier system, or um, our base that we have here, what we need to do now is add a binder to it. And the binder that we're going to use is this stuff, which is natural latex rubber. Now you need 240 millilitres of your binder system and 40 millilitres of natural latex rubber that you add to it. So this is a 208, 240, and just add that in until it reaches 280. And there we go. Now we need to add to that one gram of urea. Urea is just a fertilizer. And one gram is not very much. So I've weighed out a gram of urea here. And we pour the urea in. And just stir it slowly until the urea dissolves. So that is your basic ink system made. It's now ready to add your colouring agent. 
Now, this is where the real experimentation comes in, because you've got your binder and carrier system here waiting to take the colour. And for colour, there is an enormous variety of things available to you. It's just absolutely huge. Now, I did a book on wild colour and how to get colour from the environment around you, and I'll put a link to that in the uh, description if you want to buy a copy to get some ideas of where to search out colouring agents. Now, the problem with the colouring agents is each one will react differently, and you're going to have to experiment with it. So if you choose a uh, pigment colour, for instance, a powder colour, then it's going to thicken this up all by itself because it's a powder, it'll be absorbed into it, it'll thicken it up and it'll make it thicker. If it makes it too thick, you're going to have to add something to thin it and you just add water, will make it thinner until you get the right viscosity that you want. Now, if you're planning on making a range of these inks for sale, and there's no reason you shouldn't, they've got a lot of good points and I'll list them at the end, you're going to need to measure everything as you go along until you hit the right formulation and then you can just repeat it batch after batch after batch. Now some things will um, react with the system and cause the latex to clump and those things obviously you just can't use. Some things are just going to go in there, some dye colours will go in there and it will remain quite fluid. What you want to do then is thicken it, thicken it up a bit so that you can use it for screen printing. Now, if it's too fluid, you can modify it by adding more sodium alginate to the base, or you can add some of this stuff. This is something gone. They add this to um, tomato ketchup, as it happens, and it's a sheer thickener. What that means is it makes it quite thick until you shake it, and when you shake it, it gets quite thin and then goes thick again. It's absolutely wonderful stuff, but you need to be careful with it. You only add tiny amounts to have quite a huge impact on it. So half of a gram to a litre, less than that, is going to have a big impact to the actual quality of your ink. So it's quite expensive, that's about £20 for that. Um, there's 350 grams in there, it's quite expensive, but literally you're using less than half a gram in a litre of this stuff. So per ink, it's not that expensive. So when you've got to this stage and you're thinking about making the colouring agents for these, it's going to enter a whole world of experimentation. So measure everything carefully if you want to do batches and you want to sell it on so that you can repeat it. But that's also part of the fun of it because you're going to be making your own unique colour range of these things. Now I'm going to make a dye-based one and to do that I've got some blue fruit colour. Um, with the dye-based inks it helps if you heat it and stir it. So I put it on the heated stirrer just because uh, I have a heated stirrer and don't want to stand over the pan stirring with the spoon, but that's equally as good. And it's heated to 80 degrees centigrade, but round about there it's going to be fine, just below boiling. Now if you're going to use a powder colour, you're probably going to want to add a little more dispersing agent. So another cubic centimetre or so of coconut oil in there. Let that uh, dissolve and then add your powder. Now we're not talking about chucking in tons of this stuff to get a really intense colour, you don't need to. We're talking about somewhere between 2 and 5 grams of colouring agent, really tiny amounts. If you chuck too much in there, you're going to alter it too much. You've got to remember this stuff, when it's dry, dries clear, so you're going to be able to see through it to the colouring agent. You don't need that much colouring agent. But again, these are all guidelines for you, and when you actually come to making your own inks, you're going to have to experiment. So this is all baseline stuff for you. So once the thing's up there and heating, I'm guessing, let's put in about 5 millilitres. Now a tablespoon is about 15 millilitres, so it's a, about a third of a tablespoon. And just let that stir its way through. Again, that purely is a guess. I have no real reason for having put that in. We'll see what the result is like, and in our notebook, keep a note of what we put in, and if we need to change it on the next run, we can change it on the next run. Now I'm making about 300 millilitres in one go. You don't have to do that. You can make small batches and do your tests on the very small batches. Okay, so there's the finished ink. Now, I also put some black in there to get this grey colour. Um, there's lots of places you can go to get colour. If you're not into the wild theme then the, and the natural colour idea, there's no problem with that. Try using artist ink, try using dye um, tablets from the clothes shop, the dye on dyes, that sort of stuff. There's an awful lot of places to go and get colour. 
So the whole point of this ink is that it's um, flexible. Now it's really meant for cloth. You can use it on paper, but it's really meant for cloth. Now I had a bit of cloth kicking around, so I put some on it. And there you go, as you can see, it prints nicely on cloth. It's um, stretchy, you can scrunch it up. It's waterproof when dry, so you can wash it. And it's biodegradable, and it uses no harmful um, additives at all in it. So it's really quite an environmentally friendly way of printing your t-shirts up should you want to. Anyway, the whole point of this has been to give you a process for developing your own inks should you want to. And um, if you need any help or want to chat to me about it, please feel free to drop me a line. I'm always here to talk. But I hope this helps and thank you very much for watching.